Hey everybody, this is John again from the Michael Rambo Project, making another video showing off some cool stuff that we're doing. If you remember from the last video, one of the things that we were looking at is how do we use an iPad to create a step sequencer using TouchOSC, Osculator, and Ableton Live. Today we're going to do something very similar. One of the things that we looked at in the other video was uh, there was one page that I had that showed how to make like a nano pad type thing. Uh, and basically what we're looking at doing is creating a synthesizer that we can have right on the iPad. So if it's you playing at your show, you can just walk around and play along and it'll play. Or if you wanted to do what we do and hand it out to people that are uh, there at your show, you can hand that out and they can play along in key. So we're going to take a look again at those three pieces of software. Osculator, Touch OSC, and Ableton Live. Uh, I've got a little bit of a new rig here, nothing too crazy, nothing too new. Just made some updates and got some cool new pieces of equipment. If you remember from before, we've got the Akai APC40, the Tascam US144 interface, got a new laptop here. The new pieces of equipment that we have are the M-Audio Oxygen 49. It's a really nice keyboard if you're looking for something that's on the cheap, I think it's like a hundred bucks. And you can get, uh, it's velocity sensitive MIDI controller, you can use that for any of the shows. We use this in uh, Tip Top, I use this in Day After Day, different places as you see me playing this. Next to me here is the Native Instruments Machine. Again, this is one of my favorite things, this is a brand new thing that I've just gotten. Uh, it's got 16 pads that we have on here, they're all velocity sensitive, they're very sensitive too so you can tap really lightly if you needed to. Uh, you can see me playing this in What Do You Want, um, I play around with this and just other songs that we have, adding new beats in the background and things like that. Again, these things, not that important. Today, for what we're going to do, we're going to focus on Ableton Live, Touch OSC, an oscillator for software running on the MacBook Pro that I have, and using only the iPad is the only piece of hardware for this. Really cool, a lot of fun stuff you can do on the cheap, really fun to do. Let's take a look at what we're going to do first by creating a layout in Touch OSC Editor that's actually going to get put on the iPad itself. Okay. The first thing that we're going to need to do when we're looking to use the iPad as a synthesizer is to actually create the layout that's going to get put onto the device itself. To do this, we use Touch OSC Editor. Free program right from their site, really simple. A uh, couple things that you want to do when you first launch it. I just change the layout size to iPad. And then I like to change the, the layout orientation from vertical to horizontal. This makes it really easier for me to see everything and I think that when we hand it out, typically we go with a horizontal approach there. Uh, the other thing that I do is change the zoom down to 75%. Again, just makes it easy to see the whole screen that we're working with. This black box is what actually shows up on the iPad itself when we're looking to uh, use it as that synthesizer. So we can start adding our buttons right to this box. To do that, we'll just control and click or right click, whatever you've got. And we want to create 12 push buttons. These push buttons are what are actually going to correlate back to the actual notes that we'll use. And so I'm just going to go ahead and create 12 quickly here. I'm just copy pasting to make a line of four, and then I'll copy paste and move to make another line, you know, two lines of eight. And then last but not least, get our third row here, and we can move that down. And so that easily, we've got the actual buttons that we're going to use to uh, be our octave or our full scale. If the song that you're playing with is only in a specific key, for example, uh, What Do You Want by the Michael Rambo Project, that's in the key of E flat. And so maybe we only wanted to take the notes that are in the key of E flat and have each button here. That way, no matter what we press, it's going to sound good. Any way you want to do it doesn't really matter. What we have are all these buttons that we're going to use. The next step is to actually put them onto the iPad. And that's also done with Touch OSC Editor. So you can see here, I've got my app iPad. And what I'm going to do in Touch OSC Editor is just hit the sync button. And it's going to give you some directions. You know, go ahead and make sure that the device are on the same network. And so I've already done that, and so I'm just going to launch Touch OSC, and this is the default screen that we're taking, so I'm going to tap Layout, then I'm going to tap Add, and you can see Lucille, which is my computer, that's going to go ahead and take that, and so now Untitled 4, I've got that layout under the layouts, you can see there's a bunch of other ones as well, but Untitled 4 is the one that we want, and when I hit Done, now I'm on the iPad, we've got that layout that we just created. Next step, we're going to take a look at how we take each one of these buttons and map them to the value that they're going to send over to Ableton. Like I said, the next thing that we're going to need to do is actually use OSCU later, or OSCU later, whichever you prefer, to uh, take the signals from OSC, from Touch OSC, and send that to Ableton. Osculator is really kind of a server type of thing, and so what we're going to do first is when you first launch Osculator, 
it's gonna start uh, automatically running the OSC input port on port 8000. You can see here, mine says pause because it's currently started. Then you can see the port that's there. Once we have that, again, we're gonna launch Touch OSC and you can see the different connections that we have here. And so I'm just gonna tap connections and you can see found hosts shows my device on port 8000. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that and that's gonna pick that device as my main um, you know, recipient of the OSC command. So Touch OSC knows now to go to this specific version or this specific instance of Osculator. Once we're done, we can just tap Touch OSC on the device and then we can hit done and we're back to our layout. I'm gonna go ahead and quit and change the orientation so you can see what this is gonna look like here. And I've done a little cleanup on the layout, but now there's all the different buttons that we just made. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is just touch each button that we have here and take a look in the background in Osculator as each one shows up. And so I'm just touching them sequentially. The other thing that you wanna note is in the upper right hand corner of uh, the app that we have, it'll actually show us that we're sending a signal. And so that's what we wanna make sure that we're doing. And when we're seeing that uh, as a troubleshooting thing, if that's sending out, but they're not showing up in Osculator, we know that we haven't picked the correct server or that something is broken in that communication. So again, just kind of going through, touching each one, and I like to do it sequentially because the other thing that we have to do is change each input type to be a MIDI note. And so I can select them all, choose MIDI note, and now I'm gonna go through and select all the values that I have. And so this makes uh, choosing them sequential really easy because I can just say, take that one, you know, 60 is gonna be uh, this value and that's middle C. And then 61, oh, six, let me get that again, 61. That's 62, sorry. You get the idea. You're basically just going through and assigning each individual one to a specific value. And so we're gonna go through, add all these, and once we're done with this, we're ready to actually start talking to Ableton. Now we're getting to the fun parts. Now we're actually gonna do the piece where Osculator is gonna send those MIDI commands to Ableton. So what we've done so far is we've created our layout, we've actually mapped each button to say, this specific button is gonna be this specific note, and so now we just have to tell Ableton to listen for those commands and then actually add our instruments and get everything going. The first thing that we want to do in that is to tell it to listen for those commands. Uh, Hexler.net has great documentation on how to do that. Effectively, you install this plugin and then you go to preferences. And then here under MIDI sync, you can see I've got live control two, oscillator out, live control two, oscillator in. And all I want to do is just change that track and remote to on for all four, you know, for both of those lines there. Once we're there, we're ready to go. Again, before we get to adding instruments, a great test, I can quit this. And when I tap the button on the iPad, and I can bring up the iPad so you can see that here. When I tap the button, again, you can see the command there, but also in Ableton, we can see the command in the upper right-hand corner that it's getting a MIDI command. And so that's a great way to find out if we're actually commuting or communicating back to Ableton. Now we're actually ready to add our instruments and get all that stuff in place. So what we're gonna do to add an instrument uh, we're just adding MIDI instruments because this is essentially all MIDI. And so, uh, you know, you can pick whatever MIDI instrument you want. We're just going to go with the default agility lead that I've got here. Um, and now all I have to do is this is waiting for MIDI input from all ends. You can change this to that if you just, you know, just wanted MIDI input from this one specific device. But effectively, all we have to do now is just touch the buttons. And now we're going through and we actually hear all those tones that we have. One thing that I've noted as we've played along is that a lot of this stuff actually really depends on having a good Wi-Fi. And so this is the same one that I used before, and so it's not uh, fully mapped, but let's say you have some issues where it's not playing, like these ones here. First things to check are, you know, here we're getting the MIDI out, because we show it there, but Ableton's not getting it in. And so that's a great notification to say, hey, go to Osculator, press that button again, and see, oh, that's this one here because it's lighting up. Oh, it's because I don't have a MIDI note and I haven't finished the rest of these. So this one's actually gonna be 67, and now if I touch that, that's gonna go ahead and play. This one's gonna be 66. And you can kind of see how we can use that combination of not only looking at what's coming out in the iPad here, but what's showing up in Ableton up in the upper right-hand corner to find out if we're not getting any commands. So again, two things that we're looking at. If I'm pressing and I don't hear anything, look here and see if we see something, and if we do, Look in Ableton. If we don't see that, then we know that it's in Osculator and we know that we have a problem there. And that's it. Really easy, cool stuff to do. Uh, again, we're gonna be using Touch OSC Editor to create the layout that we'll actually see 
right on the iPad itself. We're going to connect TouchOSC up to the computer using Osculator. That's going to kind of act as that server for us. And then we're going to have Osculator send all of its commands to Ableton. And we can see right in Ableton that all the commands are actually getting there. We can troubleshoot if we need to. But the end of the day is we can get a really cool instrument that we're using right on an iPad. It's wireless, so we can just carry it around with us. We can hand this out to people at shows. They can play along with us, whatever the case may be. If this is something that is interesting or exciting to you, we'd be really excited to see some of the things that you're working on. Please post it in the comments. Send it to us on our website. You can go to our website at www.themichaelramboproject.com. Show us what you're working on. If this is something that you're doing, you wanted to remix some of our songs or play along with it, we'd be happy to get you singles, downloads, whatever it may be. We've got a new EP coming out in August, and then we have a full-length album coming out in December. Really excited to see the things that you're working on. Really excited to see you at our next show. Please, come on out and spend some time with us. We're walking out the plans to the people.